Praise the Lord, body of Christ. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. May you be blessed and may you be encouraged and may you be uplifted by the word of God today and may you enjoy this day with your family in Jesus' name. But I'd like to give a special, special happy Father's Day out to the Father God. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you that you've allowed me to be a part of this day. Thank you that you've allowed me to be a part of your ministry and the calling on your life. I bow myself down to you in the humbleness of my heart as I raise my hands to heaven for your glory, your praise, and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. So yesterday I did a sermon on the, the coming into the presence of God and understanding the movement of the, of the Holy Spirit and how it was guiding me and leading me. And so this morning I woke up and I said, Lord, where do you want me to read at today in the Bible? And I had all these different books coming to my, to my spirit. And when I opened the book, it took me to the book of Daniel. When I opened my Bible and I said, okay, well, Lord, let's read the book of Daniel. And as the first two scriptures in the book of Daniel took me on a journey, the first two scriptures that was read in the book of Daniel said, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave. That stuck out. And then I read in verse 9, now God had brought. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. God's trying to tell me something here. So I stopped and I asked God for his, um, his anointing and his revelation upon this word that he's given me today. So part of what I want the body of Christ to understand is that we need to understand when God is talking to us and he's tapping into us, there's something he's trying to say. And so this is the title of this message. And I decided I know God He's doing new things in my life. He's opened up new doors of opportunity for Saved by Grace. And I know to come to follow is going to be more expansion of the ministry of Saved by Grace. So I need to get ready and prepare to go back into the jails to do ministry and for the building that God's going to give us to minister to those who are coming out of jail. <clears throat> so the title of this message I wrote at first was God Did and God Allows. But as I kept reading, this came to me. God did it. God does it all through and for you. Give him back what rightfully belongs to God. And so in the book of Daniel chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, God gave the king into Nebuchadnezzar's hands with part of the vessels of the house of God. And verse 9, it says, God brought Daniel into favor and tender mercies with the prince of the eunuchs. And verse 17 of chapter 1, it says, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. When I was sitting here thinking of this as I'm reading, it was like it came to my spirit how a lot of us fail to realize we are, are, the anointing of the Holy Spirit belongs to God. It doesn't belong to us. We are you being used by God to operate in that anointing, to operate in that calling, to operate in that ministry, right? And so as God was saying just in verse 2, 9, and 17, he was doing it all. He took the, 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 the captivity and gave it to King Nebuchadnezzar. He took some of the vessels and put it in the, into the king's hands. Then he says he gave, he brought, he brought Daniel to him. So God placed Daniel on him. God was operating in every single aspect of what was going on here. 
a lot of times we don't understand what God is doing. Well, wait a minute, why would God take his people and give them to this individual? You have to understand that there was something going on in the Bible that the people, that, get this, the children of Israel kept being wavered. They wanted this God, they followed this God, then they'd go back to God and God would tell them to do this. And so there was this constant wavering in the book of James, it says uh, that um, the wave, it's like being in between two decisions and not staying strict. And one of the old Bible says, choose you which side you want to stay on and stay there. So in this uh, in this story, he's, he's saying, I'm in control of this whole situation. And if you read in the book of Daniel, especially when you start getting into chapters 7, 8, and 9, it's going into uh, Revelations and Ezekiel, which is talking about the end. But invert, and here's something I want you all to get as well. In chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, the king went to the worldly people because the king had a dream. And in this dream, he couldn't figure out what the dream was, what the interpretation of the dream was. And so he went to the, to the astrologers, he went to the Chaldeans, he went to all these soothsayers, and he was like, what is the interpretation of, what was the dream and what was the interpretation of the dream? He went to the world to get the answer to his situation. Now, the interesting part about this, brothers and sisters, is a lot of Christians go to the world, go to a worldly person to get an answer that they need to go to God for. And because they go to the world, they're going to get a worldly answer. So the, so the king is talking to worldly people about this dream and the interpretation of the dream. And because they couldn't fulfill it, what ended up happening was he said, I'm going to kill all of you. And so it was a trip because... First of all, these are worldly folks. They ain't into the Lord Jesus Christ. And at that time, they wasn't into the Father God because Jesus wasn't here yet, even though he was already being told of in the book of Genesis. So in chapters 1 through 5, it says, The king went to the worldly people to get the meaning of the dream and stated death to all of them and their families if they could not interpret the dream. Now, in chapter, it's amazing because in chapter 2 at verse 18, it says, Daniel went to God. Daniel went to God and God revealed. See, we're going back. Let's jump back to, to chapter 1. God gave, God brought, God gave. See, God is doing all these things with his children, with his men of God, because he's in control of this situation but Daniel went to God, and God revealed the dream and the interpretation to Daniel. Now, get this. This hit me powerfully because the world don't understand God came that all would be saved. God saved his sons, Daniel, Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego, and even the sinners by his grace and mercy. God said, okay, I'm going to use this situation to glorify my sons. I'm going to give Daniel the, the, the vision and the interpretation of the dream. I'm going to give this to him so he can go back to the king and tell the king what it was. I'm going to save my sons, but I'm also going to save these sinners because I want them to eventually convert. We have to understand something here. When we're being used by God to do the will of God, God has a bigger plan. But what happens with man is man starts to get in the way of God's plan and starts to put his own or her own thoughts and reasoning into what God is doing. Daniel made it clear. He told him and the three fellows with him, his comrades, let's go before God. Let's find out what God wants to do or say or reveal in this situation that we can go back and tell the king. I put this in parentheses here. We are just vessels being used by God. It is his spirit through us doing everything. And then I wrote this down because a lot of people 
seem to not get this. Now, let's backtrack for a minute before I read this next scripture, because I really want you to get this. God gave, God brought, God gave wisdom, knowledge, skill, learning, wisdom, understanding of visions and dreams. God sent it all. God gave it all. God is doing it all. Then all of a sudden, he gives Daniel the interpretation of the dream. Do you understand that Daniel understood when he went to Nebuchadnezzar? Give me a minute, Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to do this. So God, you brought us here. You gave us favor. You're giving us this wisdom, this interpretation, all these gifts and skills and knowledge. So I'm coming to you, God, who is in control of me and my folks. Tell us what to do. Give us the interpretation of what you need us to do. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, For it is God which worketh in you and me both to will, to want to do what he's calling us to do, and to do for his good pleasure, not our good pleasure. And that touched me because if you think about it, God's in it all. God's doing it all. And so in Ezekiel, which was, which was tight, because Ezekiel's like right there, and Ezekiel's deep. And Ezekiel chapter 36, Ezekiel chapter 36, and verse... 27 it says and I will put my spirit this is God I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them the reason that I'm, I'm showing you that scripture is because the power behind it God saying, I put in you to do for to both to do my will, and I'm giving you the, the power to do it. Then he's going back and saying, I place my spirit in you to keep my will and to do my judgments and to walk in my statutes. So God is basically saying, I have equipped you, I have prepared you, I have given you everything of me to do what I need you to do in this world and I've given you the power to work through you the same things I work through my son it's not you or me doing all this it is God and it goes back to the title that I said God did it God allowed it God did and does it all through and for us give him back what is rightfully his we're going to tap into that scripture when I go a little further, which is in Isaiah 42, verse 8. And so one of the things that I wanted you guys to really, really get here is that some of us, Heavenly Father, please, Lord, take over my, my fleshly body, Lord, that your spirit can bring this revelation to your children, Lord. I am not here to take none of your glory. This I'm just making myself submissive to you right now, Lord, that you could show the body of Christ what you showed me. I feel your presence so, so close and near on me right now, Lord. I know you promised to never leave us nor forsake us, and your spirit is always in me, but I feel when this activation of power, this activation of love, this activation of what you want to do when it shows up, Lord. Do it now that you may get the praise, honor, and glory through this message today. In Jesus' name, amen. God has placed his word in our mouth, according to Jeremiah chapter 1. In Jeremiah chapter 29, he talks about this goodwill that he has for us and to bring us a good outcome right now we just read how he put his spirit in us and it's also saying how he's come to us to guide us to do all these things 
we need to get out of God's way, but one of the things man keeps doing, and a lot of pastors keep doing, and a lot of men and women of God keep doing, they keep trying to take God's glory. I want to share with you something that happened to me before this wave of blessings came to me. We had a meeting with, with uh, the individuals that are sponsoring me. In the meeting, he was like, the, they was the, the, the new organization was like, you got a wealth of information. You got a wealth of folks behind you that are connected. And when they saw all that, I'm like, yeah, but I still need to partner with you so I can run safe by grace myself. And as I left the meeting, was driving, and I'm thinking, it hit my spirit. Literally, like the voice of God spoke and said, what if, what if my purpose was to connect you to them so that they could be connected to your resources that connect them to the mayor and connect them to people that could help their organization grow because I have a plan for them. What if that was your only purpose? And I'm driving and I just said, then let it be done according to your will, God, because it's not about me. And if I was selfish at all in this situation, please forgive me because if that was your purpose for me being there, then let your will be done. It doesn't matter because it's been that way before. And I felt this peace that set upon me and what I got in my revelation knowledge that I believe the spirit was saying to me you just tapped in you just got out the way you just humbled yourself and you took no pleasure no pride in nothing that just happened and you're willing to give them everything which is a sacrifice to you I can't explain even to word it the way it hit me, but it made a lot of sense. And then the next day, I was offered a position that paid $14,000 more a year than I was making already. And then a couple of days after that, I was offered to become a division manager, which would allow me to run with Saved by Grace. And what came to me when I was weeping, I was like, wow, God, 18 years and this finally happened, was that statement. What if I brought you to them for my purpose, for my will, and it has nothing to do with you? It made sense. Because you got to think about the movement of the spirit, brothers and sisters, and the humbleness and coming before God and understanding that his plan is bigger than yours. He said his thoughts are not your thoughts, nor his ways your ways. Joseph was sold into slavery and went through all he went through for 13 years. And in Genesis 50 verse 20, he said, You meant it for evil, but God meant it to save you and your children and the family. It wasn't even about me, but I understood that God was using me to save you. So who am I to question God? And that's how I felt when that question came to me, what if? See, brothers and sisters, you might be in a what if. You might be so caught up wondering why all this stuff is happening to you. Why are you going through all this stuff? It could be a what if. What if you're so focused on yourself and not on the will of God? And let me show. <laughs> oh, brothers and sisters, do you ever acknowledge God for all the good he has done for you and through you? Do you ever do that? And, and, and it was in my spirit to read this to you. Uh, Daniel 2, verses 20 through 23. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. 
He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Daniel went back and praised and thanked God for what God did. He didn't thank him that he saved their lives. He didn't thank them that they, he delivered them or was about to deliver them and save them and the heathen. He said, thank you for allowing me to tap into you for you to give me the wisdom, for you to give me the knowledge because you're the one that lifts up and brings up. It's all going to, all the glory is going back to God. And I remember when that thing happened to me in my car when I got home, I was watching this spiritual movie and the same thing came. Oh, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. In the Bible, God sometimes will repeat the same statement within the same statement. He'll say it and then he'll repeat it as the confirmation to what he had already said. That evening when I was sitting there watching the spiritual movie, the same thing came to me of a revelation of like my son, you finally got it. It's not about you. And even though you've known it, now it's a revelation in you that I am doing all things and I'm working all things out to the good. Not just to the good. See, a lot of people get that all things work together for the good of those who love him. It says all things work together for good to those who love him. God's not just trying to get me and bless me. And he wants to work through me to be a blessing to others. He wants to work through you to be a blessing to others. He's given you an anointing. He's given you a calling. He's given you a ministry. That ministry could be to raise kids because you have a lot of single mothers out there who and fathers ain't doing what they're supposed to do. You could have a ministry where you're out there feeding the homeless and being involved in the homeless and you're homeless yourself. There's ministry is God's working through us. And we find grace, we find humility, we find favor, we find joy in doing the will of God because we know we are in this position for that purpose. God says he looks high, looks low, looking for someone that he can work through. Can you be that someone? And that's what he's saying. And sometimes we get so caught up in thinking we're doing something, we ain't doing nothing. Let me show you this as I come to a close on this message because I really wanted to hear the, have you see this. In Daniel chapter 4, now here's something I want you to understand. The, the topic of this message today is give God back his glory. Just the fact that God is using you and me to do his perfect will through us is an honor in itself. Now, if God is choosing to use you and me, we have to tap into God. So let me give you guys this revelation. God is the resource. I'm sorry. God is the source. We are the resource that God uses. So when people ask me something, I say, hold on. Let me go back to my source because my source is going to provide me with the resource to give to you. So I'm going to become this channel of a resource, but I got to tap into the source, which is the knowledge, the wisdom, direction, understanding, and edification, and deliverance, and revelation of the Holy Spirit through me, where to go, what to say, what to do, and how to operate. That's how that works. Just like this morning, I, took, I stopped my time with God to bring this message to the body of Christ. Because we need to understand, in order for you to tap into what God has, you have to be humble. You have to be so humble in your spirit, man, that you can see 
God in a way like you've never seen him before. Because God is so serious. I think maybe I need to read this scripture right now. Because it, it's so powerful. But I'm also going to finish with this one. Because it's very important that you guys get the revelation of this. In Isaiah chapter 42, verse, verse 8. And it was interesting because all this stuff was coming to my spirit. And I'm like, you know, I love it when God talks through me. Because it it, 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 it it does something different. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praises to graven images. What he's saying right here, brothers and sisters, is that why are you taking his praise? Why are you acting like you did something? In my early years of walking with the Lord, I would always get frustrated and mad and say, God, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm doing this, and I'm going there, and I'm preaching. I'm... And I remember God saying, I didn't know it was you doing all that. And I remember sitting there going, oops. Oops. I'm sorry. Because what was brought to me is that if you're doing it, then that means that I'm not doing it. And if you're doing it, then you're operating in your own understanding, in your own wisdom, and it is you that's doing what I'm not doing. And when I got that revelation, brothers and sisters, I realized something. And I'll tell you a true life story. About 10 years ago, inside a church, I remember I was partnering with the pastor and I remember in my spirit, it said, sit down. And I said, excuse me? And it said, sit down. And I finished what I was doing, walked off the stage, sat in a chair. Pastor came up to me and said, what, what happened? I said, the Lord told me to sit down. He said, why would he do that? I said, because he said, I'm getting pride for an hour again. And it, he's right. I'm, this is not my church. This is not my ministry. It's God's church and God's ministry. And until I could be humble enough to know that, I should not be up there. See, God was working in me even back then. When I hear pastors say I'm preaching good, it bothers me. Now, maybe they don't mean it that way, but I don't ever want anybody to think I'm doing God's will. I'm not smart enough to teach this Bible. The Bible is being taught through me by the revelations that God is allowing me to have to share with you. And with that being said, we're going to go into Daniel chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 30. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about this story. So Nebuchadnezzar was doing great. Big kingdom, everything was on it. He had a dream. So he asked Daniel the interpretation of the dream. And the dream was that he, he was this tree. And his limbs were so far out that uh, birds were on it. It's like telling him about the prosperity that God had allowed him to have. But that he didn't have this prosperity because of him. He wasn't this great king because of him. It was because of God allowing him. And he warned him, if you don't get it together and stop being prideful and stop acting like you're this great guy and turn back and help the people, God's going to cut you down. So, again, that goes with us being prideful, arrogant, trying to do God's job, acting like we're doing something. So in Daniel chapter 4, verse 30, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power? And for the honor of my majesty, while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and they shall dwell in, in thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee 
to eat grass as an oxen, and seven times, seven years, shall pass over thee until thou knowest that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he wills. The same hour was the king fulfilled was the key, was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass and oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair was grown like an eagle's feathers and his nails like the bird's claws. Now he got cast out for taking being prideful, being arrogant, and acting like he did all this stuff. He didn't give the honor back to God. Brothers and sisters, some of you right now at the sound of my voice in this message have become prideful, have become arrogant, have become conceited, acting like your anointing is your anointing. Acting like the things that you're doing for the people is you doing it when it is God doing it through you. Beware. You cannot steal God's glory. He said it in Isaiah 42, 8. I shall give my glory to no one and I shall not share my praises with false gods. Get it together. It, God will humble you. You may be humbled right now. You may not be having the breakthroughs that you so much want because you're so caught up in yourself. You're so caught up in walking in your own carnalism. You're so caught up walking in the way that you think you should be walking when it's contrary to the word of God. Trust me, brothers and sisters, I have been here Many years ago, it was like, whoa, Lord, it, it's, it's a dangerous place to be. We are vessels used by God. He has placed his Holy Spirit in us to work through us. I remember eight years ago, eight or nine years ago, I read this same scripture I'm sharing with you. And what I'm about to read to you, when I got the revelation of it, it broke me. I cried for like hours, just in tears, realizing how messed up I was, how judgmental I was, how disobedient I was, how arrogant and prideful I was, but God was still sustaining me. Let me give a quick word to somebody. You may think all these blessings and opportunities that you have are coming from God, but they just might be coming from the devil to make you think you can continue to live and act and do what is not right in God's eyes. And you think God is blessing you, but it's really the devil blessing you to keep you thinking you can live sinful. Oh, in the name of Jesus. And so when I got that revelation nine years ago, I was like, oh my God, I felt so disrespected toward God. Like, what am I doing? This is the holy God. He took me off the dirt and mire and this is what I did. Oh, I was crushed. But then it hit me. Verse 35, Daniel 4, 35. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed reputed to be considered nothing and he doeth according to his will in the armies of heaven and amongst the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay stop his hand or say unto him what are you doing 36 some of you are getting broken right now reading the hearing this message you're getting a revelation right now as this is coming. You're realizing that this is you. And you're realizing that you've been stopping your own blessings. You realize that you've been acting like you is God, even though you're saying you're not. You've been sinning and living in sin and acting like it's okay. But this should hopefully be happening to you right now. And at the same time, my reasoning returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and brightness returned unto me. 
and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excel and, and excellent majesty was added unto me, was added. There was more given to me in the and who I had now become when the revelation of who I thought I was happened in those seven years. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, put your name there if you're getting a revelation. Now I, Ronnie, praise and extol and honor the King of Heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to bring down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Back to the title. God did it and does it in and through you and for you. Give him back his praise, his honor, and his glory. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for using me to speak through to bring this word, Father God. May we all, Father, me mostly included, always know that it is you who worketh in me, both to will and to do for your good pleasure. Humble us all, Father God, for the Bible says, humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. Teach us, Lord God, as we walk in this world, that we are instruments being used by you for your purpose and your purpose only, Lord. Move in through, by, and for us to build up the kingdom of heaven, to set the captives free, to bring salvation to those who need salvation, to encourage those who need to be encouraged, to raise our holy hands to heaven, Lord God, knowing that we have been called, chosen, and sanctified for such a time as this, Lord God, use us to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.